Glad you're here today. We want to have a word of prayer as we begin uh, our time together today in our missions conference this weekend. So let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we are thankful that we can be here today and we can spend some time uh, fellowshipping around your word. Uh, Lord, we're excited that this week we're going to be focused on uh, your commission to us to go and tell the world about uh, the gospel message of the Lord Jesus Christ, to, to, to share with people uh, that you love them so much that uh, the Lord Jesus Christ died and was buried but then rose again. He's alive today for our sins. And Lord, we're thankful that uh, because of the work that Jesus Christ accomplished on uh, the cross that we can have salvation today, Lord. And I'm thankful today uh, that you saved me. And I'm praying, Lord, that this, this time that we spend together today and this weekend that you would help us, you would encourage our church, and you would, Lord, uh, renew in our spirit a desire to share your gospel with uh, people around the world, uh, beginning, Lord, with us just sharing it with people right here that uh, we interact with every day, Lord. But we're excited, and, and we know that your, uh, your, your desire for our church is to share your good news, and we're praying, Lord, you would help us uh, grow in that area today. Lord, make us more like the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to grow. Lord, help us to see your desire and, and, and live after that in our lives. We're thankful for, our, for the day, and we're praying that tonight, in this hour, with this group of people, that you would help us grow, draw nearer to you today. Be with these missionary families, Lord. We're praying you would help them uh, prepare them and, and uh, use them, Lord, on the fields that you're taking them. Lord, we're thankful for uh, Dr. Shumpert and Mrs. Shumpert today, we're praying you'd help him as he opens up your word, and Lord, he presents and declares your word to us today, Lord. We're thankful for all you do. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray, and amen. Thank you so much. You can be seated, and again, we do want to say that we're glad that you're here, and we're looking forward to this weekend, and I hope you'll be uh, encouraging uh, others from our church family to be here for the rest of our meetings this weekend. Uh, we're looking forward to tomorrow uh, meeting together at 11 a.m. So I hope everyone that's here today uh, is planning on being here tomorrow. Uh, we'll meet in the ministry center and we're going to have a brunch. The church that the church is providing, so you don't have to bring anything. And uh, we'll do things like we have uh, at homecoming and some of our other meals recently. Uh, it'll be done responsibly and and uh, it'll be done well, uh, so you can enjoy it and not worry. But you'll want to be here so you can uh, just uh, get to know our missionary families uh, some more. And uh, I know Pastor is going to do some questions and answers uh, with them during that time. And that's always uh, an, uh, uh, it's a fun time for our church. It's encouraging and interesting. And, uh, and also, uh, it's a convicting time as we learn more about the hearts for, of our missionaries, and so I hope you'll be here and be a part of it. I hope you'll encourage our church family to be, uh, be here for that as well, and it'll be a blessing. It'll be an encouragement and a help to our church, and then, of course, we want to encourage you to be here all day on Sunday as well, and our, our Building with the Bible hour is in here, that's right, and so our normal Building with the Bible hour, the Sunday school hour, will be in, here in the, ministry, or in the auditorium. Our children will have their classes, but our uh, junior high up will be here in the auditorium, and again, you'll want to be a part of that. If you're not normally d here during that hour, make sure you do that this Sunday at 930, and uh, you'll be encouraged by that. And then, of course, our normal times, our 1030 and 6 o'clock service on Sunday, our missionaries will be sharing in both of those services at different times, and Dr. Shumpert will be preaching, and so we're excited and looking forward to that. Uh, so uh, hope you're planning on being there. I hope you're praying diligently for all those meetings, and then I hope you're encouraging our church family to be a part uh, of these meetings because they're going to encourage us, and it'll help us to, to, to grow uh, in this area that is of utmost importance to our Lord Jesus Christ uh, in sharing the gospel uh, to, our, uh, to the people around the world. And so we're looking forward to this time uh, this weekend. Uh, this pastor is going to come for just a moment. He's going to introduce some of our missionaries, I think. Thank you, Brother Evan, and good evening. It's a joy to see you tonight, and it is uh, exciting to begin one of our uh, most important meetings that we have throughout the entire year. That's our mission conference, and uh, we'll 
Uh, we'll gain some families tomorrow. We'll grow some more and have the majority of folks here on Sunday. So we're looking forward to a, a great meeting as it builds up to a big Sunday. And we're thankful you're here tonight on Friday evening. And uh, we're looking forward to getting started uh, in our meeting tonight. Uh, what we do over these next few days are going to decide what we do uh, in the work of the Lord as far as world evangelism goes for the next year. And so we'll be talking about that throughout our meeting. And uh, right now we support about 50 missionaries around the world. And I uh, hope that you'll continue to keep up to date on their mission letters and keep an eye on uh, what's going on in their ministries around the world. And uh, we're looking forward to growing this year uh, in a very difficult year. Uh, we want to we want to be able to grow. And uh, we're certainly living in a day of uncertainties, aren't we? And uh, just a lot going on. And uh, things in our nation that we never thought we would ever see, uh, we're seeing. And, uh, you know, so, so a lot of change is happening. Uh, but one thing that isn't uh, going to change until the Lord Jesus comes again is that when people hear the gospel, uh, there's still the power there to save them. And so we want to keep reaching people with the gospel uh, here and around the world. And uh, we're thankful for that. I appreciate our church family praying for uh, my wife and her family. And uh, 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 they had uh, uh, Angie's mother's funeral last night in Virginia and then uh, brought uh, her uh, remains back here to uh, her uh, home, uh, home cemetery, her family. She grew up and was raised just about five miles from where she, they buried her today. And, uh, and uh, just a good service there, uh, the Lord blessed and had a good group of people there to support Chuck and the family. And so keep praying for them and, and just uh, lifting them up in prayer. And uh, Angie's going to be in the, uh, here and we're going to lock her up in the house for a few days and, and uh, keep a watch on her. And then uh, uh, Matt is going to, to go back home with Chuck and he's going to spend the weekend with Chuck and go to church with him on Sunday. And uh, he's got men going to fill in for uh, him on Sunday at the church that he pastors. And uh, it's going to be the first day Chuck goes back to a church and church services. And Matt wants to go with him and be there with his dad that day. And so uh, that'll be a great day. But uh, remember, Brother Chuck, because uh, Matt's going to be going home. And he's got a church to pastor and a family to be with. And so Chuck's going to face that time there where he's just by himself. And some of you know what that's like. And uh, so we want to lift him up to the Lord in prayer. But, uh, but we appreciate everybody that's d done uh, so many uh, kind things for Angie. And she was able to come home today, and I had a big stack of cards people had mailed her and given her. And uh, I was able to put some flowers and things on the table people had sent for her. And so uh, she, uh, uh, she, uh, she's ready to be home, uh, but uh, these days will be difficult. So thank you for praying for her. But we are excited about our meeting today. Appreciate Dr. and Mrs. Shumpert willing to come uh, when we ask them to come. And uh, I can't, I couldn't say, uh, you know, I couldn't say that there's very many men that have influenced my life more for the Lord than Dr. Shumpert has. I guess probably 1996 or 7 is when our paths first crossed down at Tabernacle Baptist Church in Kingsport, Tennessee. And uh, from that time, uh, he's had a great influence on my life. Most of the major ministry decisions I've faced in my life, he's given me great counsel because I sought it out. And, uh, and so they're like our family, and we're thankful for him being here, and he's going to be preaching for us. And uh, we're uh, honored to have our missionary families with us. And uh, we've got uh, uh, Brother uh, James and Ann Cotvis and their missionaries in Peru and Lima. And uh, uh, some of our church folks around here have been to Lima on mission trips with us. So we're familiar with a few of the things there that you can. Uh, uh, what's the name of that one good ice cream place? Austin's or something? Uh, what is it out in uh, Miraflora? There's a really nice ice cream place we went to and there's a Starbucks right beside <laughs> it it's near uh, the chicken place La Canasta is that right the chicken basket yeah that's a good place 
so uh, so uh, some of our folks know about some of that, and uh, we're glad you're here, and uh, we're thankful to have you here. I know that uh, his father, your your family, has been there. How long has your family been in for? Twenty years, and uh, I know that uh, Brother Matt uh, knew of their work and highly praised what God has used them to do. And there's a special emphasis with the deaf in that ministry, isn't there? And so uh, we're thankful to have you guys here with us, and uh, we're going to get to meet them. And uh, they've got a couple uh, young ones uh, in the nursery, and we'll get to see them as well. But we're glad they're here. Thank the Lord for them being a part of our meeting. And I'm always thankful when they can come and be with us the whole time, and uh, that's a blessing. And uh, then we're honored to have Caleb and Nora Bruner, the Bruners, and their boys. This is, uh, uh, don't tell me, Jacob and Caden. Is that right? Jason and Caden, and then they've got a little sister in the nursery, Molly, right? And uh, so we're thankful for them being here, missionaries to Australia. Uh, and uh, Brother Bruner, have you been there on a survey trip? Have you been, you been to, you've seen it, you've been there before? And, uh, and so we're excited about hearing more about that. And I, I joke with our church that sometimes the Lord calls me to the outback. I like a six-ounce sirloin and baked potato. <laughs> Blooming onion. All I say, I don't think they say that there, though, do they? probably say the blooming part. That's not a, probably a very good word. But, but uh, we're glad you're here as well. And uh, we have no missionaries we support in Australia. We have them in many places, nor in Peru now. And so we're praying God would help us to make the most of the opportunity to invest in your ministries. And uh, that's what we're praying for. And uh, we believe, certainly with things going on in the world, that the Lord is nearer to returning than he ever has been before. And uh, I believe we're in that uh, Hosea type of time when all we can do is say, Lord, in wrath, remember mercy. And, uh, and so, uh, so we want to see souls reached uh, while we can do it. And that's what we're meeting here for. And uh, so we're looking forward to a great weekend. Uh, tomorrow at the brunch, uh, it's for everyone. And uh, I hope our church, all of you will come and remind others to come. And it's 11 a.m. And uh, it's uh, an informal type meeting. Uh, and we'll have a good meal for you. The ladies went out and purchased everything and got everything arranged to where we'll have a good uh, brunch for you. And we'll do it like we've done some of the other meals. It'll be cafeteria style and uh, they'll be serving you and they'll be masked up gloved up and they'll be sprayed down and they're going to be safe and they'll be good to go and uh, they'll, pro they'll they'll provide a good uh, uh, serving for you whatever you want and they'll serve you as many times as you want uh, so we'll have a great brunch uh, and then we'll take a little bit of time just to ask our missionaries some questions and take more time to get to know them a little bit better uh, than we can just do in a service. And so I know that, that that's something that's interesting to people. We look forward to it. And uh, that'll be tomorrow at 11 o'clock, nothing tomorrow night, and then uh, a full day Sunday. Uh, 9.30 in the morning, I've asked each of our men uh, to take just about 15 minutes or so and uh, share a thought with uh, us as a church on the thought or the focus of our mission conference, which is uh, God's purpose, our passion. And uh, we know that God has a purpose for the local church, and that's to reach souls, isn't it? And we want to share that passion about what the purpose is. And so we've asked these two men to take the 930 hour and just share a little bit of time uh, there uh, about that. Then Dr. Shump will preach in the morning service. He'll preach in the evening service. We'll hear from each of our missionaries in their presenta presentations on Sunday. And uh, so we'll have a great full day that day, and uh, we look forward to that. But tonight, we're going to get our missionaries to come and just give an introduction uh, of just, uh, I want them just to introduce themselves, their family, and uh, uh, tell us, of course, uh, you know, uh, where they're going a little bit more specifically. Uh, save your presentation material and uh, use that Sunday. Uh, <laughs> but uh, uh, tell us about where you feel like you are on your deputation, how long you've been on deputation, where you kind of feel like you are, and a little bit about where you've been this year and what it's been like. And so 
Uh, so uh, we're going to get uh, get them to do that. Brother uh, Bruner, why don't you come and you can you, your letters first in the alphabet. We'll get you get you to come and do that first. Well, thank you, Pastor. It's exciting to be with you here uh, this weekend. Uh, we are the Bruner family. We're sent out of Higher Plain Baptist Church in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. Uh, had the privilege of growing up there in Oklahoma City under the leadership of uh, Dr. Jim Vineyard, uh, going to the uh, Christian school there and also the Bible College there, Oklahoma Baptist College. Uh, as Pastor said, we're called to the mission field of Australia uh, specifically, and you'll see this in the presentation on Sunday. Of course, I'll save most of that for Sunday, uh, but specifically we'll be working in the outback regions of Australia. So our focus uh, will not be in the urban um, at metropolitan areas of Australia, but in the small countryside towns of Australia. There's a missionary over there, uh, Brother Heverly and his family, that has a ministry working in those areas in Queensland, Australia. And that's what we feel the Lord would have us to do. Uh, so we are excited about that. Uh, we're at 56% of our support, and we're praying that the Lord will allow us to be fully supported for the end of next year. Uh, obviously, this year has been a unique and interesting year for everybody. Uh, we started off the year in about five missions conferences in six weeks, uh, starting in the end of January and going all the way through February. And then, of course, when we finished in February, March was right about the time, mid-March, when everything kind of started to shut down. Uh, so we were off probably about three months there, April through May, and I think we had one meeting in June that we were able to keep, and then we got back on the road mid-July, and we've been on the road since mid-July, praise the Lord. We've been able to be in uh, multiple churches uh, uh, this fall, and we're excited about what God has for us as we continue to serve Him. Uh, so pray for us as we continue to travel and raise that support. Obviously, uh, at 56%, we're praying the Lord will allow us to get to 100% before the end of next year, so Obviously, that's a lot of ground to make uh, uh, over this next year, and we're praying that the Lord would lead us and put us in contact with those churches uh, that would be able to partner with us. And as we're on the road traveling, uh, so pray that the Lord will continue to provide for that. Pray that we would continue to keep on maintaining meetings and churches would be able to continue to have uh, their missions meetings and have missionaries in. Obviously, that is very important. So we're excited so much to be here. We look forward to sharing the ministry in more detail uh, on Sunday. Thank you very much. Amen. So we look forward to their presentation, and uh, that'll be on Sunday. And uh, so uh, we want to for sure uh, uh, be praying for that, and we're just asking the Lord to speak to our heart through that. I know they just drove in today from Knoxville, and so uh, Bo Brother Bob Bevington's old church, Knoxville Baptist Tabernacle, and a great bus ministry church, and uh, so we're thankful for uh, for. Uh, the Bruners and their family, and uh, I've told our church every service uh, I'm going to have a gift to give all the boys and girls who are in that service, and uh, we're going to do that Sunday as well, so uh, we don't want these boys and girls to miss church, uh, miss out on that gift, so I've got a good one I'm going to give today out to all these boys and girls, so uh, if you are a boy or a girl, why don't you come on up here? <laughs> Wait a minute. We'll have something else uh, here uh, Sunday for them. So we're th we appreciate boys and girls, and uh, we're thankful for families who choose to have their family in church. It's an investment that will pay a great return, and uh, so we're thankful for that. And uh, we're glad to have Brother James Cotless with us and his wife Ann and their children, and we're going to get him to come, if he will, and just introduce his family to us. Good evening. My name is James Cottvis and my wife Ann. Uh, we have two kids in the nursery, Elsie and Jimmy. Uh, we are excited to be headed down to Peru, South America as we begin in the ministry that God's called us to. And our burden really comes down to equipping, mobilizing, and partnering with national believers and national churches to accomplish the Great Commission in their region and then beyond that. And our passion is that God has called us to fulfill the Great Commission. Um, our church, your church here, um, any church in the United States is responsible for the Great Commission, but it's not just the churches in the United States that are responsible to take the gospel across this world. It's every single church 
in this world is 100% responsible for the Great Commission as well. And so our burden is to help the churches in Peru and in South America catch the vision of what God wants to do through their church in their area and then from their church take the gospel to other parts of South America and beyond that. And so that's what our passion is. We're excited with that. We are, uh, we've are we been on deputation on and off for about two years. We've had some health issues along the way, actually. Um, this year, talking about beginning of this year, we um, ended up, I had some meetings scheduled that we had to cancel because of my wife's health with the pregnancy. Um, our son, Jimmy, he was born early, but um, she, he, she was actually hospitalized for seven weeks before that. Um, and then he was in the NICU for another month after that. But we're thankful that he's healthy. Everything's great. But he got out right mid, um, mid-April, mid so right when COVID was starting up and all of that, well, it was already in process there. So we had to take off until uh, we were able to start up again in August with him. And uh, we're just thankful for God and what he's done for us. We're at 20% now, and God has been blessing. We're thankful for that. Um, please pray for us. I grew up in Peru. My family are missionaries there. As Pastor mentioned, my wife was born and raised in Japan. So if you speak Japanese or if you eat sushi, she'd love to talk to you either way. Um, but um, it's just a blessing to be here with you all. Thank you for your heart for missions. Thank you for your hospitality. Thank you for having us here. We're looking forward to sharing um, our burden for this world. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Well, Sam, you need to speak to the Shumperts. They were in Japan for a while. Yeah. That'll be interesting. I don't know if they eat sushi or not. I've never seen them. I know they like fried chicken, but I don't know about sushi. But uh, well, thank you, Brother James, and uh, it's a blessing. Uh, you know, Peru, Lima, the city, uh, uh, is a city of extremes, isn't it? Uh, it's amazing. You can be, uh, well, you can go to one of the nicest malls in the world in Lima, and then you can go to a place like what's it called, Pachacutec? Those Sid, those hillsides around Lima, and uh, it's uh, your dog lives in a better home that no, a lot of the people do that live there, and so it's a city of great extremes, and uh, and uh, a city of many many people that need the gospel in South America as well, and uh, uh, I'm excited about uh, the Bruners going to Australia. Do you feel like you will have uh, indigenous people that you'll cross paths with, or probably more so than maybe some of the others that might be in the bigger cities and different things? So that's a, that's exciting. I'm I'm, I'm excited about that. Uh, I told uh, the, the Bruners we had driven to New Mexico in 2016 to be with our missionaries, the Ferrises, in Gallup, New Mexico. They have a ministry of the Navajo Indians. And uh, we passed a, 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 an air base, Air Force base, that I felt like it was 20 miles long, that we kept driving by it forever. You remember that? And then got in the worst storm I've ever been in. Uh, thankfully, it was Evan's turn to drive the bus. <laughs> and uh, we stopped at a, somebody had told us, you better stop and fuel up. He said, somebody told me, fuel up here before you leave Oklahoma City because when you cross over the border and into Texas for a long time there's nothing there's nothing and so we did and and uh, this old man old guy bibbed overalls he was standing at the gas station he saw us all get out of that bus saw those Ohio license plates on it he said you heading west and I said yeah and he said I don't like the looks of that sky. <laughs> well, about 30 minutes later, we understood why, because it was blowing sideways. Uh, we couldn't see three feet in front of us. An old school bus, uh, it was fogged up every way you could go. I was dri- He was driving. The windshield wipers going fast as they could go. And I was in the wheel well, the stairwell, with a rag trying to keep the window washed off for him so he could see. And uh, it was rough, and uh, I was thankful to get past that. I really was. But I think that's pretty normal out in that part of the country, isn't it? But uh, I didn't like it too well. <laughs> but uh, but sun, you didn't either, I know. Uh, Sunday, each of these missionaries will give their presentations. They've got some videos that they're going to show, and, you know, our eye affects our heart. That's why it's so good to be able to see these things as they speak about them. 
and uh, see it in our mind and let that impact our heart. So we're excited about them, and uh, we're thankful for them being here. And uh, we're going to uh, ask Evan to come. I think we're going to sing another song, and then we'll uh, have Dr. Shumpert come and preach for us here. All right. Well, you can stay in your seats if you'll sing loud, and we're going to sing together um, Seeking the Lost. So we'll have the words up on the screen again. We hope you'll sing with us and uh, uh, enjoy uh, just thinking about our Lord and thinking about what we're uh, uh, seeking to do in sharing the gospel and being uh, uh, followers in the Great Commission. So we'll sing about it here today. <coughs> Seeking the lost, yes, kindly entreating wanderers on the mountains astray. Come unto me, his message repeating, words of the master speaking today. Going afar upon the mountain, bringing the wanderers back again. Into the fold of my Redeemer, Jesus the Lamb, for sinners slain, for sinners slain. Good. Seeking the lost and pointing to Jesus, souls that are weak and hearts that are sore, leading them forth in ways of salvation, showing the path to life evermore going afar upon the mountain bringing the wonder back again into the fold of my redeemer Jesus the lamb for sinners slain amen thus I would go on Missions of mercy, following Christ from day unto day, cheering the faint and raising the fallen, pointing the lost to Jesus the way, going afar upon the mountain, bringing the wonder back again into the fold of my redemption. Jesus the Lamb for sinners slain. Amen. Very good. Amen. Amen. That's one of my favorite hymns. I love to sing that song and uh, just a blessing and we're thankful for it. Uh, we're glad you're here. Uh, we're excited to have Dr. and Mr. Shumpert with us and <clears throat> they... Um, uh, they've been veteran missionaries and involved in missionary work for a long time. Uh, but before that, uh, Dr. Shumpert and Mrs. Shumpert worked Grace Baptist Church in Columbia, South Carolina, the pastor there. I don't know how many building programs they built. They built three or four church auditoriums, I think, as God blessed them, and they grew the church. Uh, and then God called them to walk away from all that and be missionaries. And uh, I know they have no regrets about that. And uh, they spent time in Japan. I know Dr. Shumpert's been around the world. And uh, while he was at Baptist International Missions, the Lord used him to lay the groundwork for one of their ministries, the claim ministry. And we talk about that ministry here at our church, Christian Layman, assisting international missionaries and uh, uh, responsible for putting together resources and people to help missions and missionaries around the world build buildings and remodel buildings and make a church out of them or whatever the need is and uh, uh, we're thankful for God how he uh, used uh, Dr. Shumpert in that way we support a claim missionary uh, here through our church ministries and I was involved with a claim ministry I've been involved in a few of those trips uh, one of my favorites was the Death College at Ringgold, Georgia. We went in there in a, in a cow barn and made an auditorium for them out of the attic and uh, enjoyed that very much. It was a great, great week with just a bunch of good men. 
and uh, so it was a blessing. And now, for a long time, the Lord's used Dr. Shumpert in mission conferences like ours and churches and mission meetings. And uh, today, uh, Dr. Shumpert, at the funeral, a preacher asked me about you and how you were doing. And, and uh, he said, you know, uh, he said something about money that has stuck with me all the years. I don't know how long ago he heard you talk about this, but you were talking about a certain sum of money. I forget, a hundred and some million dollars. I forget what it was. But you, you said that if you had that much money and stacked it all together, it would stretch out for like 67 miles or something. I don't remember exactly what it was. But he had never forgotten that. <laughs> and uh, uh, that made a difference in, on, in his heart and life and in his mind. And, and uh, he said so many things the Lord's used him to say in my life that I've heard him say. And my Bibles are filled with those things. And I'm thankful he's been a faithful servant of the Lord. And uh, God's using him. And we're glad he's here. And we want him to come and preach for us tonight. And uh, pray for him and his wife and their family. And uh, we're just excited the Lord's going to use him here over the next few days here at our church. Thank you, Pastor. It's good to be with you again, and uh, thank you for all of those kind words. I paid him five dollars for that before church, but we're glad to see you once again. And uh, many people are not able to be here. Uh, some have uh, sickness and health issues. Some have heart issues. <laughs> And when you put it all together, it adds up. But you are here, and that's what counts. Where two or three are gathered together, what is the rest of it? There, and I in the midst. So there are two or three. There are more than two or three of us, and I believe the Lord has met with us. And uh, we appreciate Pastor Tim, we're not here just to swap compliments, but I do appreciate him. I think he's a fine pastor, and good pastors are getting harder to find, and we thank God for these young couples and missionaries who are here, the call of God upon their lives, and that means we have gospel-preaching missionaries going to Australia and Peru and the other, there, is there one more? These two going to preach the gospel. Rejoice in that. And God has blessed us at BIMI. We, um, when many of the mission agencies are decreasing, God sent us good people every year. And going to over a hundred countries around the world, and we rejoice. BIMI is not the only mission agency in the world, but it is one agency which has stayed true to the Lord and His Word. And I'm glad to be associated, and we thank God for every mission agency who's staying by the stuff, doing the work, uh, abiding by the Bible and the doctrines therein, we rejoice in good men who serve and then their wives serving right along with them. Um, I don't know if you realize this or not, but I try to help missionaries when they have needs and problems. We had a missionary whose wife had to have emergency surgery. And there's no money put aside for flights to the U.S. And um, he doesn't like to ever ask churches for money. But Dr. Jacob Gardenhouse, the Jewish man, he's with the Lord now, but he used to say, pray to the Lord and tell the people. 
And uh, I remember that about him. I knew him personally. He was the first missionary our church ever supported. Jacob Garden House, a wonderful Jewish Christian. And uh, the Lord used him mightily. Pray to the Lord and tell the people. And so I received a letter about that need. And uh, Joan and I have helped to send money personally. We've also raised funds so that they could pay for their trip and have the surgery that's needed and the help that they needed. And um, uh, to my knowledge, that's all paid for, all covered. Uh, thank God for His people and those who have an interest and the uh, pastor announced that this church has 50 missionaries. Now, uh, somebody's got to be doing a good job for that to be true. Somebody's giving, and somebody has a passion, a burden. The Bible talks about being moved with compassion. Compassion that sits on the pew and never does anything is not real Bible compassion. Compassion drives the wheels of conduct and causes us to be involved and to do our part. And everybody has a part. God uses children. Amen? God uses teenagers. You ever heard of Evan Roberts and the Welsh Revival? 17 years old, praying for revival. And uh, have you ever heard of the young man David Brainerd? And in Chattanooga, Brainerd Village and Brainerd Road and ministering to the Cherokee Indians in Chattanooga, Tennessee, David Brainerd died 29 years of age with pneumonia. And God uses elderly people as well. And um, we had a dear lady, she's in heaven now, but she was confined to a hospital bed, an invalid, but she was a great prayer warrior. And I'd rather have her praying for me than anybody I know. And she had a ministry. She couldn't walk one step. But you'd better believe she knew how to pray. And she had a valuable ministry. She prayed for missionaries especially and had a long list of people uh, she was burdened about, prayed for them. I'm glad that my wife and I could be with you once again. And uh, just recently, the past 10 days, there are five pastors who have called me and said, we've had an outbreak of COVID-19. I was supposed to be, uh, Joan and I were going to Maryland next week. And the pastor called, and he canceled the meeting because of an outbreak in their church in uh, Oaklawn, Oaklawn, Oakland, Oaklawn, Maryland. I preached there before, Pastor Dennis Leatherman, a good church. Uh, I had a part in getting Faith Promise Missions going in that church. And he said to me, our people had a bad experience about Faith Promise so we're not going to pass out cards. And they got turned off. And uh, uh, it won't work for us to use Faith Promise cards this year. We're going to get to it, but it'll take a while. And into the meeting, I sensed that the Lord would do something if we just offered uh, an avenue so they could help. I got blank three-by-five cards. I asked the pastor if it would be all right. We passed out blank three by five cards, not a thing on it, totally blank. And I said, the pastor has a desire to support additional missionaries. How many of you will give $5 a week to help him reach that objective? Don't put your name on it. And those uh, three by five index cards came in. People put them out on there. And the church was able to take on three new missionaries with blank cards. <laughs> and praise God, it worked. 
and now it's a strong missions church. Pastor's trying to put it back together for me. And uh, I pray that this uh, virus, which is mystical and inconsistent, it's strange, is it not? But Matthew 24 talks about that in the last days. Pestilence says, the AIDS epidemic, wars and rumors of wars, all of these things shall come to pass, but the end is not yet. And uh, the first sign of the last days is deception. And people are being deceived. And we need to be alert and awake and stay with the Bible. Read the Bible. Stay with the Bible. Don't move away from the Bible. Years ago, Dr. Harold Seitler was preaching. And this is what he said. I wrote it down. I'm a part of the fellowship of the unashamed. I have Holy Spirit power. The die has been cast. I've stepped over the line. The decision has been made. I am a disciple of His. I will not look back, let up, slow down, back away, or be idle. My past is redeemed. My present makes sense. My future is secure. I'm finished and done with low living, sight walking, chintzy giving, and dwarf goals. I no longer need preeminence or prosperity or position or prominence or platence or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, top, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by His presence, lean by faith, walk with patience. Lift by prayer and labor by power. My face is set. My gate is fast. My goal is heaven. My road is narrow. Sometimes my way is rough. My companions are few. But my God is reliable and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of uh, adversity or hesitate in the presence of sacrifice, negotiate at the table of the enemy, or ponder at the pool of popularity, or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I will not give up, shut up, let up until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, preached up for the cause of Christ. I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. I must go until He comes. I must give until I drop. I must preach until all know and work until He stops me. And when He comes for His own, He'll have no problem recognizing me for my colors are quite clear. A man named Ben Priest wrote those words of the tribe of Judah Ben Priest. Aren't you glad that you're a child of God? Regardless of the election, Jesus is still the same. He changes not. He has a plan. He has it all worked out. He's never been caught off guard. He's never known an emergency. Has it ever occurred to you that nothing ever occurs to him? And God has never scratched his head and said, I wonder what we're going to do about this. I'll tell you, he is joy without sorrow. He is light without any darkness. He's a rose without a thorn. He's a morning without a cloud. He's strength without weakness. He is truth without error. He is day without any night. He's the Lord of creation, the Lord of the centuries, the Lord of the church, and the Lord of the Christian. And praise His name. What a wonderful Savior. Aren't you glad for His mercy and His grace? Their saving grace and daily grace and sustaining grace and strengthening grace. 
And there's only one thing you can say about grace. It is sufficient. <laughs> it is sufficient. Church, please open your Bibles to 2 Timothy, the second chapter. And I'd like for us to look at verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 2. And please look carefully at the words of Holy Scripture. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Christians are called saints. Christians are called students. And Christians are called soldiers. And here it is as soldiers of Jesus Christ. Verse 4, No man that warreth war. How dare you preach about war? We don't want war. <laughs> we want peace. But here it is. What are you going to do? Tear this page out of the Bible? No, it's just as inspired as all the other pages except what man wrote in the introduction and so forth. No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. Him and him. Him, God, and him, the soldier. Do you see it? And tonight as we have gathered together, we must understand that the church is at war. Mr. and Mrs. Average Christian need to remember the thundering words of Amos the prophet, Woe to them that are at ease in Zion. Lukewarm Christianity could be called the cult of the comfortable. And the preacher's job is to comfort the afflicted and afflict the comfortable. Do we not need a stirring in the land? Do we not need an awakening? I believe we have good people. Not everyone is saved. The majority of people are not saved, according to the verse that talks about wide and narrow. That's the Greek word stenosis, narrow, the narrowing. There's a spine disease, spinal stenosis. It's a disease of the spine that narrows and cuts into the nerves running down the spinal canal. The symbol of 20th century Christianity, 21st century Christianity, is not a cross, but in many cases it's a cushion. Sing me a pretty song Preach a short sermon and turn me loose before the restaurants get too busy. The Lord of the New Testament church showed his disciples that the world is a battleground. I'm sorry, some of you would say, well, that's a negative message. That's a real message, reality. I'm not worried about being an optimist or a pessimist, but I want to be a biblicist. I want to be a realist, and whatever in the Bible is true and real. Today there are different concepts and views among Christians. Some think the world is a playground. Some have the attitude that we're not here to fight, we're here to fellowship. One time I did a study of our ministries, everything we're doing at the church. 
and divided it between evangelism and edification. And in spite of the fact we had souls saved every week in our ministry, it might have been Sunday morning at the invitation, it might have been through the Sunday school class, it might have been through the bus ministry, but every week somebody came to know Christ as Savior. I rejoiced, I felt like bragging about that, but the Lord said to me, Son, I don't think you have a lot of room to brag because the masses are yet unreached. Be careful. And did you know that in the study, evangelism or edification, edification category was two to one more than evangelism. We tried to reach the lost all the time, a major emphasis in our ministry. We tried to have a balanced ministry. And it's true, we need to evangelize and we need to edify the saints. But there needs to be a balance between those two. This world is a playground. We're not here to fight, but to fellowship. We're not in a foreign land, we're at home. And a song comes to mind. This world is not my home, I'm just passing through. My treasures are laid up somewhere beyond the blue. No, we're just passing through. Our citizenship is in heaven. But cross-wearing has become more popular than cross-bearing. A.W. Tozer said, the average Christian is a harmless thing. He poses no threat to the forces of evil. Oh, Mr. Tozer, are you sure you haven't made a mistake? We don't want to hear that. Turn up the TV. We don't want to fool with that. We're interested in another view. Many churches seek their own welfare, but forgot about the warfare. And may God deliver us. And here is our scriptures. Warring. Do you see it? It's a battle. It's a conflict. It's a conquest. It's a campaign. It's a crusade. It's a fight. It is war. And satanic forces were working hard during the recent election. I don't know who's guilty, who's innocent. That's not my place, but I'm here to tell you satanic forces were at work and they're still at work. This thought about the church being involved in warfare is in our theology, it's in our hymnology. The Bible talks about it. Fight the good fight of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. Another scripture. Stand fast in the faith. The Bible talks about the weapons of our warfare. And then, I fought the good fight of faith, said Paul. And another one, war, a good warfare. The Bible talks about the sword of the Spirit. And what about our hymnology? You ever heard of onward Christian soldiers pressing on to war? The fight is on. Sound the battle cry. How about this song? Lead on, O King Eternal. You ever heard of that one? There's one that's based on the Civil War. Hold the fort, for I am coming. The banner of the cross. Am I a soldier of the cross? Who is on the Lord's side? Good question. The world is our holy battleground. Our captain is the Lord Jesus. Our orders are crystal clear. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and Acts 1.8. It's shown in the Old Testament. It's again prominent in the Gospels. You'll find it likewise in the Pauline epistles. And we're talking about the front and the force 
And we're talking about the friends. Don't forget, we have friends. We have allies. And whenever you think about our adversaries, don't forget we have some allies. Amen? Amen. We're not by ourselves. We're not fighting by ourselves. Thank God we have we have friends. What do you think is in the front? Christians are on the front line of the battle. You ever heard of Jim Elliott and Nate Saint? It's always been fascinating to me as a teenager reading the book and Elizabeth Elliott and Jim Elliott, Quito, Ecuador, the murderer and the martyr. And both of them end up at the foot of the cross. The one who did the murdering, the Aka Indian, and the one who was murdered, both by the grace of God, ended up in heaven. But would that have been the case were it not for those five dedicated missionaries who preached the glorious gospel and showed them how to be saved and sacrificed themselves so that they would know that heaven is a reality, there is a front, a spiritual war for the souls of mankind. There is a hidden front, the world, the flesh, and the devil. Satanic forces that you cannot see with the naked eye. Seducing spirit, rulers of the darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. What are the high places? You ever thought about that? The high places. Satanic forces. Satan, who is the God of this world. Joan and I visited in a home yesterday and a precious Christian lady is suffering tonight because of a granddaughter who brought charges against her two cousins and charged them with rape. And police stormed the place like those boys were serial killers. And there's not one shred of evidence on one of those boys. And families are being destroyed because of a 16-year-old girl bringing charges against her own family. And this set of parents siding with the one who seduced them and another set of parents who are defending their children. And the drama queen is spouting out a soap opera in living color. I'm telling you, they're satanic forces and they're all around us. And they're in every family in America, it seems. There's a hidden front. There's a heathen front. Most think heathens are people in a far-off, remote place, half-naked, dancing around a golden calf. No, I'm here to tell you there are heathens in America. And what is a heathen? Anybody without God. And Paul ministered to wealthy heathens and their sophisticated heathens and their heathens in low social status and heathens in poverty. But they're heathens who are millionaires. And they're they're heathens with Ph.D. degrees. I'm here to tell you, a heathen is anybody without God. Intelligent heathens, religious heathens, Paul dealt with them all. 
He faced it in Ephesus, in Athens, Greece, and in Rome. The front is everywhere. And therefore, we have our marching orders concerning the front. Preach the gospel to every creature. The answer is the Lord Jesus. Amen. Did you know that when a missionary goes to the field and he preaches the gospel and people are saved, he brings hope for the hopeless. He brings help for those who are helpless. He brings friendship to those without a friend. When a missionary delivers the gospel message to lost people, he brings a miracle through the high priestly work of Jesus Christ on the cross. If we fail to preach the gospel, you could say it's murder by neglect. There are four questions. How then shall they call on him in whom they've not believed? How shall they believe on him in whom they have not heard? How shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? Now, people can be saved just by reading the Bible. We know that. But most of the time, and if we could do a survey of this church group, most of the time, God uses somebody to point to the cross. Some man like the Ethiopian eunuch. How can I know the way except some man show me? And a missionary is a show me man and woman, a show me woman. Show me the Lord, show me the path to salvation, the heathen front. That's why we have missions. That's what it's all about. That's why we ask you to give. Do you see it? Why should we give? Why do preachers talk about giving money? Did you know that most uh, professing Christians do not tithe? And here I come along asking you to give an offering above the tithe. And some people have said, you must have lost your mind. Most Christians do not tithe. And you cannot give a faith offering or a grace gift if you're not tithing. The tithe belongs to God. You know right well there is a doctrine that says, well, that's part of the Mosaic law. You don't have to tithe in this dispensation. We know by Scripture that the tithe was given before the law was ever instituted. And you check it in the life of Melchizedek, who is one of the Theophanies of Christ. And Melchizedek brought his tithe to the Lord, and it had nothing to do with Moses' law. A.B. Simpson gave the famous words, they're passing, passing fast away. A hundred thousand souls a day in crisis, guilt, and gloom O church of Christ, what wilt thou say if in that awful judgment day they charge thee with their doom? I don't want blood on my hands. And I'm here to tell you that I represent lost souls around the world. I see them. I hear them. They come to my mind all through the hours of the night. I'll never forget seeing a man in Hong Kong who didn't have arms, he didn't have legs, and somebody built a little dolly for him, and he laid his torso on that dolly. If you've ever been to Hong Kong, you know that it's hills and Kowloon and beautiful in many respects. And here, you can't go anywhere in Hong Kong unless it's up or down. And here's a man, somebody had wrapped burlap around his elbows, and the stumps of his legs, and it's almost like he's paddling up and down those streets. And I stood behind him and watched him for a long time. Oh, that I could speak his language, and oh, that I could witness to him. 
And uh, I put a gospel track in his language in his shirt pocket and breathed a prayer, Dear Lord, send somebody, save this dear man. Lord, don't let this dear man go to hell. I pray that he will be saved before it's eternally too late. I can't get him out of my mind. I represent him tonight. There are millions, the masses, you'll never see them. They'll never come to this church. You'll never lay your eyes upon them. But you've heard about them, and you know they're out there. The millions, Christians meeting underground in Latvia, and the Chinese meeting underground in hidden places in the woods. We believe there are 500,000 Christians in Vietnam. Most of them live in the mountains of Vietnam, not in Saigon, not in the cities, but mountain people who have heard of Christ. I met secretly with a number of pastors, four or five pastors, Vietnamese pastors, they just got out of prison for preaching the gospel of Christ. We didn't meet together. I went first. They came 30 minutes later. We didn't leave at the same time because there are policemen watching. There are communist leaders watching. And they recognize me as a foreigner in their country. You better believe they're watching. And I see the faces of those Vietnamese pastors. And I see the scars in their bodies where they were beaten. I've been to Cambodia three times and been to the places where Pol Pot martyred another holocaust. He's another Hitler. And he killed two to three million of his own people. He killed people if they wore eyeglasses. His reasoning if they have a pair of glasses, maybe they can read. If they can read, they can think. If they can think, one day they'll rise up against me. I see the faces of the governor of the Swarian province. And we took two 40-foot containers, or maybe three. And we had... Uh, a million gospel tracts written in Kamai, and we had 50,000 whole Bibles, and I knew the only way to get that quantity of Bibles into Cambodia was through medicine. And I didn't want to say 50,000. I wanted to say 14 pallets, hoping the minister of health wouldn't know the word pallet, and it worked. <laughs> And I asked for five things. I got everything I asked for. I said, I need a government truck to pull our containers to this hospital, which Elizabeth Dole helped to build. And you should have seen the operating room. Women came in and laid on dirty boards. Blood was dried and hard. No mattress, no sheet, just wooden boards. I could see five million germs laying on those boards. We cleaned up a room and wanted to make a model room in the hospital, painted it, and we put uh, a motorized bed, a hospital bed. I asked one of the doctors to lay on the bed. I knew their electricity was not 110 but 220, so we carried transformers and put the transformer on the floor where the electric hospital would work. The doctor got in. I said, now push the button. He pushed it and the hospital bed starts coming up and his eyes started getting big. And he had never been in a situation like that. And Pol Pot killed every medical doctor that he could find. Killed them because they were educated. Oh, we're in war, church. Do you see it? There's the hidden front, the heart front. The heart of the battle is the battle of the heart. 
we're not on a campaign to see that people dress in certain kind of clothes, certain brand of clothes. No, that's not our warfare. Our warfare regards the soul and the heart. And the heart is wicked, desperately wicked. Who can know it? I think that means who can understand really how wicked our hearts are. Oh, thank God for the blood of the Lamb to rescue us. Man says we need a new start. God said, no, you need a new heart. Man said that sin is a blunder. But God said, no, sin is spiritual blindness. Man says... We're full of imperfections. But God said, no, it's just plain iniquity. And you need a ransom and a redeemer. Man said, you have a great defect. And God says, no, you have a disease that is fatal. And oh, for the drive, that compassionate drive to turn the wheels of our conduct and we find ways to give. We find ways to pray. We find ways to send the missionary. We need to confront the sinner with the claims of Christ. That's a war. I was in Atlanta, went to the barber shop, and uh, an Arab man was there. Uh, Ask him about reading the Gospel of John. Have you ever read the book of John in the Bible? He immediately became irate. I thought he was going to fight me. Just went ballistic. And that's part of their culture. Not all of them, of course. But I'm here to tell you, he became so irate. Another man who was in that place, was afraid. He was afraid that the fellow might hurt him and then turn on me. War is costly and war is demanding. Are you in the force? Have you signed up? Thank God for those who have signed up. We have some who have said yes to the Savior. And then I want to hurriedly mention the friends in the warfare. Well, first of all, we have the Savior. He said, I'll never leave thee nor forsake thee. Then we have the saints, our associates. Uh, they stood by Adoniram Judson, didn't they? Our associates. Like a mighty army moves the church of God, brothers, we are treading where the saints have trod. We're not divided, all one body we, one in hope and doctrine and one in charity. Did you know that in many Baptist churches, people leave the church over the most petty things you cannot imagine? And many times they leave a pastor wondering why they left. Right down the street from our church, I was visiting every house on the street in front of the church and every house street behind the church and every house on the intersecting street. And I came to a house, invited them to church, introduced myself, I'm new, and would like to invite you to church. Do you have a home church where you attend regularly? And they said, well, that church is so small, I don't think I can attend. About two years later, I knocked on the door again, would like to invite you to church. And the man of the house said, that church is so big, it's too big. We've got to find a smaller church. And I said, dear Lord, I give up. <laughs> and so help me, that was the case. One minute is, is too little, one minute is too big. Uh, how do you win? But 
God promised that he would stand by his people. Do you believe that? And then we have the serving angels. Angels from the realms of glory. Hebrews, the first chapter in verse 4. Are they not all ministering spirits? That's the name God gives for those serving angels. Sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. You and I are heirs of salvation. And the ministering angels help us. We're not in the war by ourselves. And you know the story of Elisha. Alas, Master, what shall we do? And God used angels to help Elisha. Hudson Taylor said, Remember this, the devil can wall you round, but he cannot roof you in. And with God, there's always a way. Where there's a will, there is a way. And when you count your adversaries, don't forget our allies. We have allies, amen? <clears throat> and they will be true. If God be for us, who can be against us? Amen. There was a missionary in the country of Alaska who worked hard to get a church started. I've been to the spot. I can take you to the place. He worked really hard to get a work off the ground and get some things going. It was doing well. And one deacon rose up and made a false accusation. And that missionary got discouraged and left that place, went to the lower 48, and never preached again. All because of one deacon who got out of line. We're in a warfare. But wait a minute. God would have helped that missionary if he would have just remembered the promises of God. I knew the brother. I thank God for him. If he could have remembered, he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. And I'll tell you, there's a deacon who will face God with that false charge. And that day will come when God, who knows who's who and who knows what's what, there's a God who will do business and bring judgment in that case to discourage a faithful soldier who got so discouraged that he gave in. Stand up, Christian. Don't give in. It's easier said than done. But he that is within you is greater than he that is in the world. Numbers 32 and verse 6. Shall your brethren go to war and ye sit here? Have you ever thought about... Uh, be sure your sins will find you out. That is the sin. And if you'll study the context, what is that sin? Be sure your sin will find you out. What? What sin? The sin of not fighting. Be sure that sin will find you out. Missionaries don't quit. Oh my, easier said than done. And people will talk about you and the devil will lie against you. He's the accuser of the brethren, remember? Be sure your sin will find you out. I don't think I'll ever forget Wang Ming Dao, the Chinese pastor whom I visited in Shanghai. He was almost deaf. His wife was almost blind. 
He served 17 years in prison for preaching the word. He didn't see his wife for over a dozen years because she was put in prison also. He didn't know if she was dead or alive. She didn't know his status. Wong Ming Dao. I said to the group of people that I had with me, please stay here. If we go as a group, we'll make a scene and it'll be hard for Wong Ming Dao. Let me go by myself, please. And when I get back, I'll report. I'll tell you all about it. I walked up those flights of stairs, knocked on the door. He had never seen me. I'd never seen him, but I read about him. And I found out from his granddaughter in California how to get to him in Saigon. I introduced myself, and I couldn't have been treated any better if I'd been the Apostle Paul. He and his wife invited me in. I didn't see nice decorations on the wall, no carpet on the floor. And here's this godly, godly saint. He told me about the three-self church, the government-approved church. He told me about being in prison for his faith. A true story out of the mouth of the man who suffered in communist China. I needed to get back and I said to him, Let's pray together, and I must go back. Can I get anything for you? I thought he might have said, we need groceries. We need the hearing aids. We need eyeglasses. I, I wondered what he might need. He had learned English, and so he said to me, it's been years since I've had anybody to sing with me. Onward, Christian soldiers, would you sing with me? And my heart melted. I stood there in a nice suit that had been given to me. And there he was, the humble servant. We held hands, <laughs> singing as loud as we could sing. Onward, Christian soldiers, tears coming down his face. Unless I lose my mind, I'll never forget that. Pastor, I must go back. Thank you for taking time to see me. And he said, wait, I must send someone to escort you back. He had a friend, a lady, who walked behind me, not beside me, and helped me to get back to the right place. Onward, Christian soldiers. Who do you think is going to win this war? God's people. And there's coming a day when the King of Kings will walk through the Valley Kidron and through the Eastern Gate and sit on the throne of his father David and of his kingdom there shall be no end. The Golden Gate the Turks sealed it up because they heard a preacher say that Jesus was going to walk through the eastern gate. But I'll tell you, that sealed gate won't stop my Lord. <laughs> He's marching through. And he will bind the devil for a thousand years, then cast him into the lake of fire for all of eternity. And the Lord Jesus will gather his people for the bride of Christ and the great marriage supper of the Lamb. And we're on the winning side, church. Be faithful, be steady. 
be encouraged. The devil may be pulling a few stunts, but there's a greater one who shall rule and reign in every heart. Give him praise and glory in your life. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed, Christians are praying. Heavenly Father, we pray that you'll help us to be faithful, steady stewards. And we thank you for your word and your promises. I pray that you'll bless this dear church. We thank you for the pastor and for the people. Oh, Lord, work in every heart. Speak to hearts. And Lord, I, I cannot always get through, but by the Holy Spirit, Lord, you can get through. You can touch us. You can speak to us. And Lord, I do pray that you will. Let's all stand together. Everyone standing, heads bowed, eyes closed. I wonder if we could use the song, Am I a Soldier of the Cross? I don't know how well you may know it. We'll give you the number in a minute. And if we can't sing that very well, we'll find something else. But the words, if you just remember, re review the words. It'll help us tonight. And if you need an altar of prayer, here it is. It's open. It's ready. And then pastor will come. We'll be dismissed as the Holy Spirit leads him. But I wonder before we announce the song, is there someone here tonight who would say, Brother Shumpert, I, I've really been weary. I admit it, I've been so discouraged. Pray for me. Would you raise your hand? Be honest about it. It's okay. God bless you. Thank you. I see your hand. God bless you. Thank you. Others, I'll admit it. Uh, things have been tough. Pray for me. Will you lift your hand if that's what your heart is saying? Heavenly Father, work in this invitation. We pray that you'll bless these dear ones who have requested prayer and admitted the need for a refreshing from the mighty spirit of the living God. I pray for Jesus' sake. Amen.